and welcome to Boobs By, your favorite plastic surgery show. Uh, my name is Amadei Lach and today we are talking about 10 most common questions before you do breast augmentation. So uh, today we're doing uh, two streams. One is live on uh, Instagram uh, live. Hello everybody on Instagram. And the other one is YouTube um, viewers that can see this video afterwards. So let's get started. Uh, question number one. So the most common question uh, of, of, of uh, women before, before doing breast augmentation is this one. How do they feel? Well, um, they feel good. I mean, <laughs> it's very subjective. It's very individual. There are, there are women uh, with, um, uh, with a very, very, um, a, with a lot of tissue, a lot of skin. And in those cases, of course, the, the implants feel much, much softer than in other women where there is, there is a lack of tissue. So if a woman has very flat uh, chest before and does not have kids, so the skin is not distended, is not lax, she will get much, much firmer result than a, a, a woman after having kids, um, after breastfeeding, because in those cases, the, the tissue is already stretched, is already relaxed, and um, the implants will feel much softer. There are also, of course, differences in um, the material the implants are made. There are certain types of, uh, of, of uh, implants that... Um... Oh, there are certain ty types of implants that are softer and others that are firmer. But uh, the thing is that the end result much, much more depends on the skin and the cover than the material of the implants by, the, by themselves. Um, some companies make softer implants, other make uh, firmer implants. In my opinion, the, 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 the implant material does not really change much the end feel or the end result of the, of the, of the breast augmentation. So much more important is the tissue, the skin and the muscle before surgery than the material of implants by themselves. Okay, number two. Of course, uh, the second most common question, when can I restart my activities? Nowadays, um, everybody does fitness, everybody work, works out, everybody does a lot of sports, running, uh, all sorts of things. Of course, people also do, um, do, I mean, they have jobs and they have to work, but usually they're more interested, interested in when they will um, start their sports again. Well, it's like this. Um, the, the pain usually settles down after a week. And so after one week, uh, uh, women can start with their, um, their activities like work in um, of office or easy jobs around the house, cooking, maybe some cleaning. Easy jobs, easy work without any weight, without any difficult uh, activities. After two weeks, some light uh, I mean, light work can be done also uh, with, with a little, little bit of strength, a little bit of weight um, lifting. It's like um, working as a, as a hairdresser or maybe a beautician or something like that. Then after three weeks, uh, you can start doing jobs like factory or maybe a, in bar or something where there is some heavy lifting, heavy, heavy work. So... Uh, all of the practically all of the women return to work uh, after three weeks or inside three weeks. Uh, I mean, one week for for office work, two weeks for light manual labor, and three weeks for heavy work. What about sports? Well, usually I do not let my uh, patients to do sports any kind of sports for three weeks. Of course, that is very difficult. So usually they start before that, even though they tell me that no, 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 I didn't do anything for. Uh, for three weeks, but I mean, after one or two weeks, everybody's doing at least some sit-ups, some, some lounges or something like that. Then after, um, after one month, I let them do some jogging, running with a nice, strong, firm um, a bra to, of course, to keep the weight up because, you know, jogging and breast can be right quite <coughs> dramatic. And uh, to do sports like fitness, like uh, um, CrossFit, like uh, uh, workout for, for the upper part of the body, like shoulders, pectoral muscles, it usually takes a little bit more. It's, it's usually up to two months. Some girls um, try before, but I usually um, um, ask them to wait at least two months before doing any kind of uh, heavy, heavy, heavy um, activities. 
Okay, that was number two. Number three, will I, will I have drains? What are drains? Drains are tubes, um, silicon tubes that we put inside the, the operating uh, wound to, to suck out, to drain the, the blood that, what, that might accumulate. Um, well, um, no, I never use drains in breast surgery or let's say in, I do not in 99%. There are few, few cases where I do. So no, you will not have drains, probably. Okay, uh, breastfeeding. What happens to breastfeeding after surgery? Um, we always advise, especially to women who are in their, in their, um, I mean, um, situation where they are planning to have more kids, that they do first the kids and then do our surgery. So they would not, um, you know, um, have kids, breastfeed, do do breast, and then have kids again because we don't, we do not really um, know what happens to the body. Uh, during um, to, during breastfeeding, you know the, the the tissues expand, they can fall down. So we we would we might would have to do more surgery to put everything back up. About breastfeeding is uh, like this. The, I mean the, the the simple breast augmentation does not change the ability to breastfeed. So if you had uh, everything in order to breastfeed, you will also breastfeed with your. Uh, after breast augmentation with your implants. Um, of course, I mean, there are different reasons why uh, women cannot breastfeed. So we cannot guarantee they will be able to breastfeed because they might not have been able to, to breastfeed even without, without their silicones. So uh, if you had uh, uh, everything in order to breastfeed before surgery, you will most probably have everything in order also after breast um, implants. Um, number four. Let's go to number five. Um, so this is a similar question. I will have kids after surgery. Is that okay? Well, I told already about breastfeeding. What about the skin and the aesthetic result? Well, the, uh, there are, of course, the, the quality of, of uh, skin tissues, of collagen, of elastin. I mean, all the different tissues is very, very genetic. So, I mean, nobody can, can, can know exactly what will happen after breastfeeding. Um, of course, if, if, you if, if a woman has uh, uh, enormous breast during pregnancy and is breastfeeding, um, the, the tissues, when, they, when the milk is gone, can, of course, collapse and fall down. On the other hand, there are many, many girls uh, who are breastfeeding uh, with their implants and afterwards everything settles down. And in many, many cases, the result is even better than before. Why? You know, question number one, how, we, how do they feel? I mean, the, 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 the tissues during breastfeeding expand and then of course they collapse back and, uh, and they become softer. So the breast after breastfeeding usually becomes more natural to see and to feel. So softer and better to see. But you know, there are of course cases of women who, are, who have, um, I mean, not so good tissue quality. And in those cases, we might have to do some sort of correction of the position of the breast because, I mean, the, 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 the breast could sag, could fall down, and then we need to pull everything back up and um, um, pull the skin together to have, of course, a nice result afterwards. The, the exchange of implants is not necessary in those cases. <clears throat> okay, number five. That was number five. Let's go to number six. Um, can my body reject the implant? Well, this is a quite, quite a tricky question because it actually con uh, is, uh, consists out of three different complications that some um, surgeons or people call co um, a, a, like a rejection of an implant. So the first one is an infection, an early infection. When there is an infection inside around the, the implant <clears throat> and then of course the implant uh, the, the wound opens itself and the implants shows itself so it has to be removed. Um, some people call it um, you know, like, an, like a, a, a re rejection, but it's not a real rejection, it's more it's, it's like an infection that caused the rejection. So it was caused by infection, not, not, a, not the implant by itself. There is the, um, the reaction in the way of caps capsular contraction. Um, capsular contraction is um, is a reaction that <clears throat> that happens <clears throat> around the implant. 
<coughs> the, the, the implant is a foreign material, of course. It's a <coughs> foreign material inside the body. And the body reacts to each foreign material in a way that it um, makes a, a nice um, capsule around it. Usually, or like in most cases, this capsule is very thin and it's very soft and you cannot feel it. It's, it's, uh, you're, not, you're, not, you're not able to, to, to feel it your, through your skin. But there are certain um, situations where the capsular contraction becomes hard and firm and even painful. Um, usually it happens after many years after surgery, but it's much, much less common in the last, let's say, five to ten years than it was before. Probably because the, our technique is better, the, the, the sterility is better, implants are better, we do more uh, implants under the muscle, and in those cases, the probability of having a capsular contraction is really, really low. I will talk about capsular contraction on some other occasion, uh, in some other, uh, on some other um, um, broadcast. And the third um, rejection, let's say rejection, is something that is called um, breast implant illness. It's, an, it's like a disease that nobody knows why it happens. Um, it's extremely rare, but for some girls it's, very, it's quite devastating because it shows itself like, a, <clears throat> like, a, like an autoimmune disease, you know, with pain in the joints, uh, with uh, itching, with headaches. We have seen many, many different forms. And sometimes they, then they do, of course, all the blood tests, all the, all the specialist doctors, and nobody finds anything. So at the end, you know, they say it's probably the implant. And it's true, you know, sometimes then you remove the implant and they go, they go uh, um, well, I mean, they, they're okay. So there is, this is, I mean, it's, it's rare. I have seen maybe two or three cases in my whole career of, let's say, 1,000 breast um, augmentations, but it can happen. I mean, I, I always say, you know, um, of course, there is a possibility of certain reaction to an implant. I mean, it's, it's a foreign body. So even if you eat some, I mean, food that's supposed to be healthy, you can get a reaction. If you eat medicine or drugs, you can have a reaction, you know. So having three cases per 1,000, you know, the reaction rate is really, really small. Rejection rate, let's say, or, or however you call it. So yes, I mean, implants are not for everybody, but for vast, vast majority of people, they are really, really problem free. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> oh yeah, this is a very popular seven. Um, what about using fat? So can we use fat to make your boobs? Um, yes and no. Um, I do not like this procedure. Um, why? Because I cannot guarantee a nice result. Using own fat is always um, a little tricky because you have to understand that there is a certain percentage of fat that, that, is, that is, gets um, absorbed and goes away. So if I inject, let's say, 200 milliliters per side or even 300 milliliters per side, which is, let's say, a small implant size, and the half goes away, what you get? I mean, you get 100 milliliters of fat that stayed, stayed in, 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 in the breast. It's like half of cup. I mean, it's nothing. So if a woman wants a nice breast augmentation, I suggest doing the implants because it's, I mean, it's predictable, it's safe, it's easy. If only in cases where I already do liposuction because the, I mean, because there is excess of fat, there is, I don't know, stomach or back or whatever. And we have the, this fat that otherwise we would throw away. In those cases, I do it. I mean, even the small percentage of fat that stayed inside the breast does do some small correction. It's not like a breast augmentation, but, it, but it's something. I mean, it just, instead of throwing the fat away, we use it for this small, small breast augmentation. And usually it works. As long as, of course, the patients understand that it's only a small correction. And that small correction is a little bit unpredictable. But still, it's a, it's a way of doing it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> number eight. Is the result permanent? Well, nothing is permanent on our bodies, as you probably know. So, again, yes and no. The implants that we use uh, in, in, in the last years, uh, they have a lifetime warranty. So, the factory who, does, who produces the implants say, if an implant gets ruptured, so it opens itself inside the body, 
throughout the life, we will give you new implants and we will pay for the next surgery, which sounds, of course, great. It, that means that you know that the factories um, understand and they know that the implants are made to last very long time. And that's also what we see in practice. Um, I, I, have, I have removed um, implants, just a second. This implant, after about 14, 15 years of uh, being inside the body. And when you, when you look at them, you know, they are, I mean, the form and the, the, the stiffness and the shape is, is almost like a new implant. So it's quite incredible. This was inside the body for 14 years and it's still, it's a, uh, as you can see, is an atomic shape implant. It's a Mentor 323, 3, 345 milli milliliters. And it's like new. So yes, I mean, the implants will last, but our bodies will not. What can happen? Um, well, you know, the, 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 the body changes, of course. Um, the, the breast can sag, the, there can be some, like I said before, capsule, capsular reaction or other deformities in the shape of, of, in the, in the, um, of the position of the implant. So, yeah, I mean, if, you, if, if a woman is 20, 30 years old, she will have to live with these implants inside the body for the next 60 or 70 years. You know, 60 or 70 years ago was almost Second World War. So it's an extremely long period that we live now, our lives are long. So if a woman comes and, want, and asks me this question, I say, look, these are made for a long time, but do not expect to have them forever. I mean, 20 years is quite realistic. Even 30 more, of course, nobody can guarantee. Only the, only the materials will probably last, but our bodies, no, they are made to perish. <clears throat> So uh, number nine, uh, will I need to massage my breast after surgery? This was a very common suggestion or instruction uh, years ago when we did a lot of uh, breast augmentations under the skin or under the gland, not under the muscle. Nowadays we do like 90% plus 95% of submuscular. I do all of them. And uh, no, I, my opinion uh, is that it's not necessary. It will change nothing. It will... Um, it will help. It will not uh, prevent um, capsular contraction. Um, so no, I mean, for me, it's not not necessary to massage it. Okay, if of course I would suggest to touch them, to feel them, to you know, to follow them. If you, you feel any, of course, changes, any um, foreign like um, or um, lumps or small um, like tumors or something, of course, that's important to follow your to, to feel your body and go to the to a doctor if you feel something strange inside, like cysts or whatever, but to massage the implants to prevent capsular contraction, in my opinion, is not necessary. It does nothing. So number 10, sensibility. Um, what will happen to the, my breast sensibility after, after breast operation? I mean, man, mine will stay okay, but the patients, Yes, I mean, it can change. Usually not, but it can change. Um, some some um, temporary changes are very common. Um, usually they are, or they, they can be in a way of tingling, like, you know, like uh, small um, ants walking or something like that. It can be burning pain. It can be uh, like um, um, pulling pain or, or the sensibility can be smaller or diminished or can be, can be uh, stronger than before. That's all normal, you know, because to make an pocket where we inside the, the body where we put the implant in the, the the nerves we have to stretch the nerves to make the, the space so um when we do that of course the nerves get injured because they are stretched they heal afterwards they sometimes they need a few months to heal but they usually they heal quite okay so that there would be any permanent change in a breast augmentation it's quite rare it happens in few percentage but Usually it's fine and there are no sensibility um, problems whatsoever. So that were the nine changes or the nine changes, the nine questions that uh, the girls usually ask before doing surgery. I will do one more um, article like this um, about uh, most common questions after surgery that they forgot to ask before surgery. Um, and uh, that will do in the next, uh, that I will do in the next few days. Um, so that is finished for the YouTube.